Bama is at its best. Her most recent game against South Carolina did not score in double figures. That was the first time all year, so keep an eye on that. And then Deja Kelly, the freshman phenom, former McDonald's All-American, has really scored the ball well in her last five. Back games. in her hometown, too, Deja Kelly, a San Antonio girl, so gets a chance to come back home, has a lot of fan support who managed to snag some tickets that were limited for this matchup. But off we go. North Carolina and Tar Heel Blue and another freshman, Alyssa Usby, misses on her first attempt. Starting five presented by Capital One for Alabama. Hannah Barber, Megan Abrams, Jordan Lewis, Araya Copeland, the other part of that big three along with Jasmine Walker. Christy Curry has been to the NCAA tournament before with Purdue and Texas Tech. Now partying like it's 1999 with Alabama, and you know I was going to have to get at least one Prince reference as we now bring in Holly Rowe. Well, when you watch Alabama play today, you'll see their brand of basketball is physical. They reinforce that with these really cool awards. It started out as the Dirty Dog Award, and it has evolved. The Nasty Dog Award is given each and every game to the player who did the most. All the little things that don't show up in the stat sheet. It's a pretty dang good chain. I think it makes my outfit lots cuter. But these players <laughs> love winning these awards. Wait till you see their reaction. If they win today, we'll bring it to you live. Holly, I knew when we first learned about the Dirty Dog, Nasty Dog, I, I knew that you were going to be all over that. And you did accessorize quite well today. So well done to start us off. Janelle Bailey, a double-double machine, 44 in her career. Couldn't get that one to go down for North Carolina. Petra Holoshinska. And the Tar Heels a bit cold to start. That Abrams battle to looking watch inside. inside is right there, Jen, as we just read each other's minds there. <laughs> Copeland versus Bailey. Which of these two players inside can be more physical? That is going to be such a battle on the block. And both of those players have to stay out of foul trouble as well. UNC has a bit of a deeper bench, but Alabama doesn't like to play really more than seven players. Walker misses, Copeland on the glass. Starting five for North Carolina. A couple of freshmen, as we mentioned, Deja Kelly, Alyssa Usby in that starting five, but Courtney Banghart saying her seniors need to come to play in the NCAA tournament. Stephanie Watts, Janelle Bailey, Petra Holoshinska need to lead the way for this team in the postseason. Courtney Banghart. It's her second year with the Tar Heels, very successful in her 12 years at Princeton, seven Ivy League titles, eight NCAA appearances with the Tigers, was the Naismith National Coach of the Year in 2015 when she had a perfect 30-0 regular season. Bailey wanted it inside. Kelly not quite ready to go there. And Alabama is in this 2-3 matchup zone. That's what they love to do. They want to pack it in and force you to shoot threes. That is one of my keys for North Carolina. You can't just settle for threes. You have to find a way to attack the inside of that zone, just like Alyssa Usby did there for the Tar Heels. Usby, a freshman who Courtney Banghart, quite frankly, felt got looked over when it came to some of the honors, all tournament team. She had a great ACC tournament. And Christy Curry looking on. Well, frustrated, I think, the way both teams, some jitters to get going. But you mentioned your keys, Kelly. Here they are for North Carolina. We're going to talk about UNC's balance all game. They have five players in double figures, including freshman Alyssa Usby, who's averaging 10 points per game. And then, like I said, UNC was trying to do that there, get the ball into Bailey. But you'll see teams, sometimes when you're playing against a zone, you're just lured into shooting threes. It's happened to me, Jen, once or twice, I will admit, as someone who loved to shoot threes. But you have to attack the high post and try to get the ball inside and also attack with the dribble, like Deja Kelly just did. Bailey with the offensive rebound. Nothing doing that possession for North Carolina. Walker. And this is going to stay with Alabama. 
All right, Kelly, your keys a, for Alabama. A fresh 20 seconds, and my keys for Alabama. The big three have to step up. It can't just be two of the big three. All three, Copeland, Walker, and Jordan Lewis, have to step up and produce today. And then transition defense. North Carolina likes to run. They have great athletes. They have good depth. Alabama has to find a way to get back. And you see, in that situation, they only brought one player to the glass. They're sending three or four players back to try to get ready for UNC attacking in transition. Both teams, a bit cold to start off. Huge collision as Stephanie Watts went flying. And Deja Kelly also slow to get up for North Carolina. Wow, very glad everyone got up and was okay, Jen. This was an intense collision as you see Watts and Deja Kelly. Baby blue on baby blue crime there, Jen, but I'm glad they're both okay. And finally, Jordan Lewis able to hit a field goal. That was the first one for Alabama in this game. Three on this end from Kelly. Bailey again trying to clean it up. She's gotten the rebounds, Kelly. She just hasn't been able to put them back in. And Copeland's done a good job. Even when Bailey has found offensive board, she's been good defensively. But how about Alabama heating up? from beyond the arc and starting to shoot the ball better. As you well know, Kelly, bad shooting can be contagious, so can good shooting. You see it go in, your teammate says, I got your back, and Stephanie Watts gets one for North Carolina. Stephanie Watts, second all-time in UNC history in made three-pointers with 268. We'll tell you a little more about her journey. She's been playing college basketball for a very long time. Her sixth year as a college basketball player, her fifth year at North Carolina, she can light it up from three. Yeah, I'm not sure. Do we have time for her whole journey? Probably not. <laughs> She's, uh, she does have quite a story. And with the shot clock going down, Lewis trying to take it to the rack. Petra Holoshinska, transfer from Illinois, joining the Tar Heels this season. Kelly lets it go. Bailey again gets the offensive rebound and just has it swatted away by Copeland. Janelle Bailey is working inside. That's already four rebounds for Bailey as she is keeping Alabama on their toes on the offensive glass. That's the key to attacking the zone as well. You've got to grab those offensive rebounds. I know she hasn't converted them yet, but I love her effort. I love her energy early. She has to take her time a little more. You grab those offensive rebounds. Don't force it. Don't rush it. Feel where the defense is. Use your dribble. See if you can get a better look. Daily 0 of 6 to start this game. And North Carolina having some trouble getting the ball in bounds. Jen, I think we're seeing a little bit of nerves from both of these teams. We only have two players on either of these rosters that have ever played an NCAA tournament, and that's Janelle Bailey and Jalen Murray for North Carolina. Both of these coaches have a lot of experience, but very few of these players have tournament experience. Excellent two-man game there, as it seems Alabama is starting to settle in. Yeah, it, it's a, it is a bit odd, as we were talking about getting ready for this one, the fact that the coaches do have a lot of experience, but as you just said, nobody really on the floor. So this is new for a lot of these players. They're still feeling things out as our first round rolls on from San Antonio. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Alabama having a little fun in some of their first few days in San Antonio. And you know what, Kelly, maybe that's a good idea, you know, to, to get some of the nerves out. You're on this big stage for the first time for all of these Alabama players. You do a little relay race, freeze tag, some dancing. They might need a little bit of that kind of mood right now as both teams looking a little tight. And that's exactly what both coaches were telling their teams at that timeout. Settle down. It's just basketball. I know it's the NCAA tournament, but you've been doing this all season. You've been playing well. You know what you what shots we want on offense. And I'm sure both coaches were emphasizing that to their teams. And I would think for North Carolina, they'd take that shot from Deja Kelly all day long. She didn't hit it, but on this end, Alabama does. They get the three as Barber knocks it down. 
Hannah Barber is such an unsung hero for this squad. I know we talk about the big three for Alabama. In some ways, especially with how Barber is playing lately, it should be the big four. She had a great SEC tournament. She generally is looking to distribute, but she's been shooting the three really well as of late. And this was an impressive look where she said, all right, you're not gonna close out completely. I'm gonna shoot this ball right in Stephanie Watts's face. That's not even a hand down, man down situation. The hands were up. Hannah Barber just said, I'll take it. Stephanie Watts is gonna try to answer this end and does for North Carolina. Stephanie Watts had a three uh, made in her face on the other end and she comes back and does the exact same thing to Alabama. Crimson Tide missed their first five field goals since then. They've made four out of the last six. And this is what I mean about Barber. She runs the show. She just is in charge of that offense. She knows where people need to, need to be. She gets the ball where her teammates want it. She's constantly directing traffic, calling out what set they're in. Barber, even though it might, it might not show up completely in the stat sheet, even though she does average four assists a game, she is incredibly important to this team. Nice move to get through some traffic by Lewis. And winds up with the ball back in her hands. And gets it to a good place. Walker finishes. How about Jordan Lewis pointing at her teammate after Walker finished while she's still on the floor, getting after loose balls. That's what a dirty dog or a nasty dog would do in Alabama's program. Finds Walker and then an easy one dribble and finish for Jasmine Walker. She finishes off the three-point play, as you would expect, an 83% free throw shooter. Janelle Bailey committed the foul on that last play. That was her first. It's gonna be something to keep an eye on. Bailey needs to stay out of foul trouble, stay on the floor for North Carolina to try to help defend this player, Kelly, right here, Jasmine Walker. Look at these numbers. Fifth in the SEC in both scoring and rebounding. And you just don't see that very often from a player that is not a true post player. She plays the four for Bama, but I think she's going to end up playing the three at the next level. You, you see very few players, Jen, that are top five in their league in rebounding and also shoot 40% from three. Yeah, very versatile player, Jasmine Walker. And finally, a putback that went in for Janelle Bailey. See if that gets her going. Foul and Kennedy Todd Williams, a player from North Carolina, had both hands in the air, which you put up to try to say you're innocent, but it generally means you're guilty of the foul, and it is Todd Williams picks up the personal. This game has been physical, very physical, not just inside between Copeland and Bailey and Walker, but also between the guards. We've already seen players from both sides of the floor getting on the floor. <laughs> We've seen a certain level of physicality so far in this game, that's for sure. Megan Abrams at the free throw line, a junior for the Crimson Tide. Now these two programs met in December of 2019, so not that long ago, although the personnel for North Carolina significantly different from this game to that one, but Abrams was a part of that matchup, which Alabama won, had a career high 21 points in that game against the Tar Heels. With Kelly, gotten off to a cold start and she won state championship state of Texas last time she was in this building in the Alamo Dome won a 6A Texas state championship was named MVP of that tournament game but not off to a good start today Barber knocks down another for Alabama put her in the big four I know Bama they love their big three but let's put some respect on Hannah Barb her name get her in that big four Jen She's earned it so far, hit a couple of threes. Must be short. Largest lead of the game for Alabama. Crimson Tide looking to extend that. Lewis, maybe a little bit of hesitation, uncertainty as to where she would go. Now Kelly, leading the break, gets it to Usby. Great defense by Abrams. Made Usby alter her shot in the air, didn't foul but did just enough to cause Usby to miss that layup. Usby has grown into such a valuable player. Courtney Banghart often saying she doesn't like to take her off the floor, the freshman, and what she has done for this team throughout the season. She's coming off a career high 23 points in North Carolina's last game 
which was a round two loss in the ACC tournament to Wake Forest, another ACC team that made this NCAA tournament. But sometimes it can just be a different animal when you get on this stage. Alabama is definitely the more veteran team of these two squads. You have Walker, Copeland, and Jordan Lewis, all seniors. Lewis is a fifth year senior, Barber a junior, Abrams a junior. They don't start a player younger than a junior. North Carolina starts two true freshmen. I think you're seeing the maturity versus the youth so far in this contest. North Carolina trying to make something happen on the offensive end. Keep giving it to Stephanie Watts. She's the only Tar Heel to triple so far. She's made three of them. Now, she's a mature player, as we referenced earlier. She's been playing college basketball for a while, and so she needs to keep playing well offensively to help her younger players settle in to this game. She is keeping North Carolina in this one. Barber showing off the handle. Foul on the floor as Kelly driving the lane. Jen, I know Deja Kelly drew the foul in that situation, but I would prefer to see her pull it out. She went into the paint. It was a one on four. She did get fouled, so not the worst possible outcome. But I think at times UNC is playing a little too fast. They are so focused on scoring in transition that that's leading to some turnovers and some bad shots for the Tar Heels. Myra Gordon checking into the game for Alabama. Six foot freshman out of Fort Worth, Texas. So back in her home state, as is Deja Kelly. Finally, a point for Kelly. And there's part of the Deja Kelly fan club. Getting the chance to see the San Antonio girl come back. Couple of free throws, some good creative artwork on the signs. Appreciate that. And that's a very good sign for Deja Kelly. Sometimes if you get to the free throw line, see the ball go through the net, that will help you settle into the game even more. Lewis with the drive and she was fouled. Jordan Lewis attacking the middle of the lane and it just kind of opened up for her as Zelaya wasn't there to help. Lewis finishes with contact in the A and one. She is coming off a very good performance against South Carolina. Had 25 points in that game. Second team all SEC performer. A very solid guard for Alabama. And Holly, you can add more on Lewis? Well, she's more than just a solid guard. She is an incredible young woman. She is actually in school getting her MBA right now. She is required to go into in-person classes several times a week. And so they've actually scheduled their whole practice schedule around her. She shows up at 1 p.m. You'd never know that she's been in class from 8 to 12 every single day. And they are just so proud of what she's doing academically. Um, an emphasis in marketing, but she will graduate with her MBA soon. You had to get dressed up for all of those morning sessions too, Holly, which is something we can all appreciate is I'm not going to lie, I have spent much of the past year in sweatpants and slippers. Final few seconds of the first quarter. Alabama in the lead, looking to add to it before that buzzer sounds. Can't do it there, but they will take the advantage at the end of the first quarter. To get you caught up in all the other NCAA action going on today, we'll get you to Kelsey Riggs in the studio. Round one action in the Hemisphere region was split between day one and day two. Yesterday, we saw South Carolina, Oregon State advance to the second round, along with Georgia Tech and West Virginia. Kelly, you and I had Oregon State. What a fun team to watch. And we're all wondering, Who's going to win that national title? There's some, if you like numbers, and I know you do, Kelly, there's some numbers as ESPN BPI projects it to win. And in our hemisphere region, which is where these two teams are, Maryland and South Carolina. South Carolina is the one, Maryland's the two in this part of the bracket. But Maryland, according to BPI, has a better chance to win the national title. I know the Terps are playing really good basketball. And then I noticed, Jen, no NC State on that list. And NC State, the signature win for North Carolina this season, even though they're a one seed, not in that top five. Very interesting. Hmm. First ever one seed for the NC State Wolfpack after a tremendous season for Westmore's team. We'll see. 
<laughs> I don't trust those numbers. But I know a lot of people like Anything numbers. Anything can happen. That's what's the beauty of March, although for the first time in a long time, day one saw all the higher seeded teams advance. It was chalk on day one of the NCAA women's tournaments. So we're still looking for that first upset. It was the first time that the better seeded teams won on a single day, all of them since 2010. And we thought that wasn't going to be the case as you and I were doing our Michigan Florida Gulf Coast game and we saw the Georgia Tech Stephen F. Austin score. Oh, I man. thought for sure the Lady Jacks were going to get an upset. But Georgia Tech, credit to them, the, one of the grittiest teams in the country fought back and found a way to win that game in overtime. Georgia Tech Yale Jackets down 17, tied for the fourth largest comeback in the NCAA tournament. Get a little nil, yeah, for Nell Fortner and the work her team did in that one. We've had a couple of shot clock issues is what we've had a couple of delays here early in case you were wondering, just making sure that everything was correct in our timing. That was really well done by Deja Kelly. She was in perfect position defensively and help side, saw the pass going into Jasmine Walker and broke it up. And now she's fighting backside rebound and trying to box out, box out Jasmine Walker, who has a considerable few inches on her. Barber really forced into that deep three as the shot clock was going down. Good defensive possession by the Tar Heels. Barber has range. Now that ball, that shot was maybe at the logo, which is a little outside most players' range. Was that Gramlich range back in the uh, Clemson days? <laughs> yeah. the, the tiger paw is very large, so that logo is a little closer to the three-point line than the women's basketball logo in the middle. <laughs> Janelle Bailey has four now for North Carolina, and finally able to try to help a little bit. And Holly, North Carolina needs some more help in this game. That's right. Janelle Bailey had been on the bench for a while with an early foul, and they had been really struggling without her. She's their leading scorer. She's also that big post presence. You see her and Copeland going at it for rebounds and boxing out, and they've got to have more of her. She's been on the bench for quite some time. And you can see right there, Holly, she kind of backed away, knowing she needs to be careful with the foul. But now North Carolina turns it over. They had a good break getting down the floor. They put it right back in the hands of Barber. And Holly, it's a great point. When North Carolina is playing so quickly and they're getting up such quick shots in transition, that doesn't allow Bailey a lot of time to get to the block and get position. That's part of why UNC needs to slow down a little bit just so they can get Janelle Bailey more involved in the game offensively. Bailey had that rough start, 0 of 6 from the floor. She's made her last two. Copeland's doing a good job of keeping her high, so that spacing is really thrown off because Copeland is pushing her off the block. Uh, Watts had a wide open Alyssa Usby on that play. You can hardly blame her, though. I mean, Stephanie Watts has had the hot hand for North Carolina, hit three threes in the first quarter. She was three of four from the floor in the first quarter. The rest of her team was two of 20. Any three right now, I think, is a good look for Stephanie Watts, the way she is shooting the ball but everyone else has struggled to shoot the ball from three. And that was one of my keys, to not settle for too many threes. That's what Alabama wants you to do. They want to play very solid position defense in their two-three zone and force you to take contested shots over them. And then they're going to grab the rebound. Lewis just fearless going to the basket. Jordan Lewis is one of the more underrated guards in the country. She has done so much in her five years at Bama, over 500 assists, but she also can score the ball, as we just saw. All four NIT quarterfinals come to ESPN Networks on Thursday, beginning with Mississippi State and Richmond at 6 Eastern on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. And visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Stephanie Watts on the free throw line. We've teased her story a little bit. Her collegiate career began in 2015-16. She was the 2016 ACC Freshman of the Year at North Carolina, spent four years there, then transferred to USC for the 2019-20 season, but only played four games there. She was hurt. She was granted another year of eligibility. Back she came home to North Carolina, the state where she started it all. She is a Wesley Chapel, North Carolina native. It's a really cool story. You don't see that very often. That's incredibly rare. And 
Courtney Banghart and Stephanie Watts got reconnected and they talked and got to know each other and Courtney Banghart is very glad she welcomed Watts back to the program because she has been incredibly important for UNC this season. And Lewis right now incredibly important for Alabama. She scored their last 10 points and Walker by the way on the bench with two fouls. Jordan Lewis has been lights out. 13 points in this game herself. North Carolina only has 19. She's hit the three. She's attacked the basket. She has also found her teammates. Ola Shinska hits the three. She's a player who can be a great outside threat. They need to get her confidence back. She was 0 of 8 from the floor, 0 of 8 from three, a season low two points in her last game in the ACC tournament. Copeland had it for a moment, but Stephanie Watts has been everywhere. Going a little behind the back, oops, a little too much off the back of the heel the second time around. UNC has been very effective against Copeland. She is scoreless. They've done a good job of their weak side guards being in help side, so when she catches the ball, she's automatically doubled. And Jordan Lewis, she's off to a hot start, but North Carolina has held Copeland in check. Oh, Sheen's got taken it to the rim. A lot of contact, no foul. Alabama running the break, but it goes out of bounds. It'll go back to North Carolina. That was out of bounds off the official, Jim. That was not off Alabama. That was Alabama, then the official. <laughs> was headed that way, though, and the official's yes, part of the it floor. It was, they it was. Try their best to get out of the way. <laughs> it's tough. It's very tough. There's no doubt. By Forsberg, Charles Gonzalez, Laura Morris, our officiating crew for this matchup. Watts picked up Great a dribble, got Andrews. a little stuck. Alabama plays such excellent team defense out of that zone. They're constantly helping each other, constantly passing off UNC players when they go from their part of the zone to the other part of the zone. Three, a little short. Usby will pick up the rebound. No Bailey at the moment for North Carolina, but no problem as another triple by Holoshinska pulls the Tar Heels within four. It just takes a couple possessions for North Carolina to get back in the game because of how they shoot the three with Holoshinska, with Stephanie Watts, Deja Kelly, Usby, all these players knock down the three at a consistent rate. So when they're down, that deficit seems a little smaller than it does for other teams. Copeland finally on the board for Alabama. Just good patience and a nice pass to set her up on that possession. I would go to Copeland offensively right now, Jen. No Janelle Bailey in the game. They're trying to guard Copeland with the young Malou Shatinge, who just scored a bucket there, by the way. But I would get that ball to Copeland offensively. 8-2 run by the Tar Heels. Those two for Alabama coming from Copeland. Lewis. Defense just backing out of the way. Somehow Kelly got her hands on the ball. Jump ball is the call there. As Kelly and Lewis, the two point guards, battling for the rebound. And it is a battle as both of our teams trying to fight to move on to round two. The NCAA Women's Championship, presented by Capital One, is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Little program to program men's and women's support as Alabama and North Carolina both had some watch parties to watch their men's teams. Alabama still has a chance to do that and some good connection between the teams is something we've seen a bit, Holly, for Alabama. Well, they really talk about having a championship culture. All of the teams, all of the programs at Alabama. Christy Curry told us that Patrick Murphy, the softball coach, Dana Duckworth, the gymnastics coach, so many people were coming over, bringing cupcakes, well wishes, making sure that they were sent off with a championship attitude. And that culture is contagious. They really help lift each other up, uplift each other. And um, it's so contagious that Dana Duckworth, the gymnastics coach, she's so busy wishing Christy Curry good luck. And then she just turned around and won the SEC Gymnastics Championship this weekend. So they call Tuscaloosa T-Town title town for a reason. They're all really lifting and supporting each other.
No doubt. Well, right now, a little bit of foul trouble to concern the Crimson Tide as Araya Copeland just picked up her second. Walker has two. She's back on the floor. And there's UNC attacking the middle of that zone. That's what I think North Carolina needs to do a little more of, even though Stephanie Watts is knocking down her triples. And we talked about Alabama. They don't want to play many people off of their bench. They generally play around seven players. So Walker has two fouls, but she's back in the game, Jen. And then, of course, Copeland, as you just mentioned, on the bench with two. Lewis fighting her way for an offensive rebound, doing it all right now for Alabama. Lucha Tenge staying in the game. That's going to be an offensive foul. And I'll turn it over. Let's take another look at that play. Great job here by Ali Craig Cruz to take that charge. That is textbook right there. Set her feet outside the restricted area. Petra Holoshinska pointed down at the area, but if she saw that replay on tape, she would realize that Cruz was nowhere near that restricted area. And it winds up and points on the other end. Hannah Barber, her third triple of the game. Alabama has been so efficient today from the floor. Five of ten from three. They've had really good shot selection. When to take their threes, when to attack the basket. They're shooting 42% from the field. An excellent offensive display so far by the tie. Kolashinska just got called for that offensive foul, trying to make up for it. She's knocked down a couple of threes in this quarter. And that's how you close out on a shooter. Jasmine Walker all the way out on Holoshinska. She knows that Petra can knock down a couple threes. Now it's an offensive foul on this end as Megan Abrams whistled for the foul. Holoshinska feeling a little better about things. North Carolina has gotten close, but Alabama has been in the lead most of the way for this first half of this 7-10 matchup. Bailey back in the game for the Tar Heels with two fouls. Watts Good pass. to Bailey. That'll do it for North Carolina. That is a great pass by Watts. If you can get to the short corner, which is what Watts did, attack the baseline, got to that short corner area, the block extended. The defense had to come over and help on Watts. Quick little dish to her teammate, Janelle Bailey. Janelle Bailey, one of three 1,000-point scorers on this North Carolina team, along with Watts and Holoshinska. We welcome those of you just joining us, North Carolina, Alabama, 10-7 matchup in the Hemisphere region. Under a minute to play in our first half, Alabama Crimson Tide out in front, playing in their first NCAA tournament since 1999. That was a gimme for Alyssa Usby. She couldn't finish. It was a great cut, making herself available to her post player that was in trouble. I like what Alabama's doing. They're sending doubles and sometimes triple teams to Janelle Bailey to try to frustrate her and try to force her to turn the ball over. That time, Bailey made a great pass, but Usky missed the layup. Watts playing some tough defense. Already has three blocks in the game. Ties are season high in the first half on the defensive end. And Lewis on the offensive end. Somebody better step up and stop Jordan Lewis. Because right now she is leading the way for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Coming up on AT&T 5G in the studio, Kelsey Riggs, Monica McNutt, Andrea Carter going to talk to you about the Georgia Drexel game, Rutgers BYU. And they'll ask the question, is Texas A&M getting enough credit? For answers to that question and many more, we'll send it to our fine ladies in the studio. Kelsey, it's all yours. Welcome. Yeah, not only taking more shots, Holly, but making more of them. That'll, that'll allow you to keep that green light on for a while. And defenses most of the time lock in on Jasmine Walker, who's averaging 19 points per game, fifth in the SEC. And so when you're really focused on Walker, when Walker's at the top of your scouting report, then enter Jordan Lewis, who's able to get more open looks because of the attention that the defense puts on Walker. Will Janelle Bailey be able to get going in this second half? The turnaround good to start things off for the Tar Heel senior. Okay, Janelle Bailey, we see you. Known more for her back to the basket game that time. 
Nice little fade away. Walker on this end. Left it just a little short. Usby running with the rebound, puts it in the right hands. That's Stephanie Watts. Had it blocked, though. Copeland got her hands on the ball. Lewis waiting for some help. Gets it back in the corner. The three is good as Lewis now 21 in the game for the dive. Why take a two when you can get a three? That is my life's motto. And Jasmine <laughs> Walker down low had a look. I thought maybe she was gonna try a reverse layup, but instead kicked it back out, found the hot hand in Jordan Lewis, who is now three of five from beyond the arc. Kolachinska, Watts ready, waiting, hits it. It is raining threes in the Alamo Dome right now. Steph Watts. She is hot from beyond the arc. That is her 4-3, first of the second half. Walker still looking to get going after halftime. Copeland, though, manages to keep it in possession for Alabama. Of the big three for the Crimson Tide, Lewis certainly leading the way after the first half. Copeland really limited, had just one field goal in the first 20 minutes. Walker, who was on the bench for a good portion of that second quarter after she picked up her second foul, just five points in the game. And that's gonna go the way of North Carolina. That is the third foul on Copeland. That is a big development for Alabama. I believe, I would assume she's going to head to the bench as Coach Curry subs her out. We might not see Copeland for the majority of this third quarter. And so that opens things up for North Carolina offensively. Can they take advantage of Copeland's absence and try to pound that ball inside to Janelle Bailey? Yeah, it's a big loss on both ends of the floor. They go right where you predicted they would. Bailey trying to take advantage inside. We've got Ali Craig Cruz, six foot one junior, trying to guard Janelle Bailey. Janelle Bailey, 6'4", strong, very difficult to defend inside. Foul before she got into her shooting motion on that last play. She sticks with it here and puts it in for a couple more. Double digits now for Bailey, who's gonna try to do the work on the defensive end and stay out of foul trouble. Let's take another look at this Janelle Bailey bucket. Gets the offensive rebound, gets another rebound. How about two rebounds, two points on that possession for Janelle Bailey. So don't just watch her when North Carolina is running their offensive set, but also Janelle Bailey offensive rebounding. That is going to be something to watch for in this third quarter with Copeland on the bench. But who cares, Jen? Rebounding's all well and good, but if Jordan Lewis is just <laughs> raining threes, I'm not sure it's gonna matter that much. Usby had it blocked. Walker got back. No points for Jasmine Walker since the first quarter, but you know who does have points? Oh, that was set up so perfectly. Lewis just <laughs> unable to knock that one down. That possession is exactly why as Cruz draws the charge there. That possession is exactly why Jasmine Walker is going to be a pro. The block and then leading the break in this play, Jordan Lewis, whew, pump fake, one dribble, knocks it down. That pump fake had Steph Watts flying past her. And that's the kind of attention that Jordan Lewis commands as a shooter. You have to close out on her and try to get a hand in her face. But sometimes if you close out too strong, she's going to hit you with the pump fake, one dribble pull up. Well, she's also the SEC active career leader in assists, was trying to set up Walker that last time. And there's Walker leading the break again. She's 6'3". She averages nearly 10 rebounds a game. She shoots the three really well, and she can bring the ball up the floor. It's her versatility that separates her from everyone else and why I think she's going to be a top 10 draft pick. Speaking of versatility, look who's guarding her. It does be the freshman for North Carolina. Ball to Barber. Round and out. Rebound, though. Put back. Lewis continues her 
winning ways, trying to keep Alabama in front, and she does so by double digits now. Jordan Lewis looks like a woman on a mission. This is her first NCAA tournament. As we know, it's Alabama's first tournament since 1999. And she's not here just to make the tournament. She's here to win a game or perhaps a few in San Antonio. She's here to make threes, Kelly, is really what we've come to find out, or baskets of any kind. And Walker has gotten to herself some decent looks, just been unable to put them away. Lewis has gotten some runs of her own in this game. She scored the last eight for Alabama. Bailey, come on, a little emotion from the senior after that one. Give the ball to Janelle Bailey. There's no Copeland. Bailey has room to work inside, and she is feeling it in this third quarter. Foul before too much can develop that time with Lewis. Game face on for the redshirt senior from Windermere, Florida. And it was Kennedy Todd Williams who committed the foul, her second. Copeland sitting with three fouls for Alabama. Abrams through the traffic. Usby. Will the freshman make her mark in this NCAA tournament? She has struggled so far on the offensive end. One for six in the first half. But someone who has not been struggling, Jordan Lewis doing it for Alabama every which way. She sets him up. She can also knock him down. She has her crimson tide out in front. Well, Kelly, the big three, as we like to call them, the trio for Alabama, haven't all come to play, as you said they might need to do today, but one of them picking up the slack. Yeah, Jordan Lewis is, is really doing it all for the big three, and I think Walker's played a pretty good game overall with six boards. She's been in some foul trouble. Of course, Copeland in foul trouble as well on the bench. But Jordan Lewis, she has done it all. 26 points. She's 10 of 19 from the floor. She's got seven boards, also three assists. Her career high is 28, so she's getting very close to that mark. And we've got about 15 minutes left in this basketball game. This is shaping up to be one of Jordan Lewis's best games of her career, there's no doubt about it. And could have, couldn't have asked for a better time, right, Jen? First game of the NCAA tournament. No time like the present. And she has scored or assisted on 23 of Alabama's last 27 points. Now, she did just pick up her second personal foul on that last play that put Kennedy Todd Williams on the line for North Carolina. So certainly something to keep an eye on. Abrams spins. Nowhere to go. Ali Craig Cruz went back to Abrams. The tide working it around for two. Two-man game between Abrams and Cruz. And Alabama does a great job of attacking, dishing out, and then re-attacking. They continue to put pressure on the defense by constantly attacking those gaps with the dribble. And Deja Kelly on this end, undaunted, a member of the ACC All-Freshman team this season, 0 for 7 from the floor in the first half, will now have three free throws coming up as she was fouled on that three-point attempt. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 begins on Saturday on CBS and TBS, or you can always stream the games on the March Madness live app from anywhere. For more information on game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Deja Kelly, perfect so far from the free throw line. Taking them where she can get them. That is hard to do when you haven't shot the ball well from the floor. To go up there and knock down three straight free throws cuts this lead to six. That's impressive from a freshman who mentally has struggled a little bit from the floor. But to go up there and knock down those free throws, well done. Abrams, too strong. Kelly now with the rebound. Tar Heels ready to run. Kelly leading the way in the paint, around and out. Lewis forcing the issue. Watts feeling like that contact was not generated by her, but she is the one whistled for the foul. That's her second. 
Watts pleading her case, saying that Jordan Lewis ducked the shoulder and initiated the contact. But we know Jordan Lewis, she has a sturdy frame. I'll put it that way as a point guard, okay? She is not going to get knocked off of her spot. You'll see some point guards, maybe they don't have the height, but they don't necessarily have the strength either. Jordan Lewis looks like a fifth-year senior out there with her strength, and she is not going to be pushed around in the paint, that's for sure. Dad making sure mom knows, hey, we're on the big screen. Derek and Shireen, <laughs> Jordan's parents there to cheer her on. I like the houndstooth worked into Shireen's outfit as well. It's a nice touch. Bailey Copeland back on the floor with those three fouls. Todd Williams, no. Copeland has to be careful, still fights her way to that rebound. And then a little out of control as Walker just kind of ran into the back of one of the Tar Heel defenders. Mariah Copeland, another senior on this Alabama team, trying to make her mark in this NCAA tournament. A player who led the SEC, ranked fourth in the country in field goal percentage coming into this game, shooting it over 61% from the floor, but just one field goal so far today. She wants it. Trying to get position on the smaller Espy. Abrams flying through everybody, and a foul is called. He may have missed a couple steps there. I know the North Carolina players and bench were looking for a traveling call, but again, this game continues to be physical inside, and we're starting to see foul trouble all over the place as Todd Williams picks up her third foul. I think. All that foul trouble, Jen, is very indicative of just how physical this game has been. It's been that way from the start, it feels like. The first tip in this one. Eight points in the game for Abrams. It's right about her average for the season. Had a great game in the second round of the SEC tournament win for the Crimson Tide against Missouri. Had a season high 19 points in that one. Alabama wound up losing in the next round to South Carolina. Todd Williams keeping it alive, playing with three fouls for North Carolina. Watts into the lane, saw us be ready, waiting. She hits a three. What a pass by Stephanie Watts to find her freshman. Jen, you know how I feel about this. Hit her right in the shooting pocket. Didn't have to do anything but catch the ball, rise up, and knock it down. First field goal of the second half for Alyssa Usby. She averages 10 points a game. One of five Tar Heels who average in double figures but couldn't do much defending Copeland on that play. That's what we call a mouse in the house. Alyssa Usby giving up some size and height to Copeland, and Copeland did what she should have done, just went to work on the smaller player. Copeland making an impact on both ends since she's come back into the game. Walker knocks it down. First point since the first quarter for Jasmine Walker. Christy Curry loves it. Just when you felt like North Carolina was grabbing back some momentum with the Usby three, Bama goes right back down, hits that three from Jasmine Walker. North Carolina, they claw, they claw back in a little bit, and then it feels like Bama hits timely shots to get back a bigger lead. North Carolina probably feeling like they've been fighting uphill since they shot it at about 20% in that first quarter. Lewis content to slow things down on this possession. You can hear Coach Curry in this yeah. empty gym. <laughs> Wanting a little more movement as that shot clock getting low on the tide. And Copeland left wide open in the paint. Great pass. That is an exceptional pass from Jordan Lewis. The defense really went towards her, right? She has 27 points. The defense collapsed on her. She made the right decision, found Copeland for an easy two. 7-0 Alabama run, largest lead of the game.
for the Crimson Tide at 12. Watts a little too ambitious. Walker snatches it away, takes it all the way herself, everything but the finish. Kelly has Bailey there with her, but the defense parted enough for Deja Kelly to make her first field goal of the game. Good decision by Deja Kelly. Took it all the way to the rack. Didn't try to force a pass. Finished amongst the trees. Three. Won't go that time for Barbara, but Copeland is there. Couldn't get a shot off in time, but we have one quarter left to play. One of these teams going home. One still dancing for now. We're going to get you to Kelsey and the ladies in the yeah. studio. Kelsey Riggs, Drea Carter, and Monica McNutt with this studio update. And over on ESPN2, Drexel and Georgia, they were tied at 25 at the break, but Jenna Stady doing her thing, Drea. They call her Steady Stady for a reason, inside and outside. In the Rutgers BYU game, Rutgers creating a little bit of space. They're up plus 10 points in the paint. We'll see what happens. And Bama up 10 after three more after this. Coming up next on ESPN, the NCAA Women's Championship first round continues. We've got Wright State, Arkansas, followed by Mount St. Mary's and Maryland. That winner will take on the winner of this one. Then Michigan State, Iowa State, and at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, Marist and Louisville. All games also available on the ESPN app. Meanwhile, 10 minutes left to play to decide a winner between Alabama and North Carolina, the Crimson Tide, back in the big dance for the first time since 1999, trying to move on to the second round. They're nine and one all time in the first round of the NCAA tournament. North Carolina, though, 21 and six all time in the first round, although they were knocked out in their first game, their last appearance two years ago. Bailey just had it batted right out of her hands. Walker. Starting to find her stroke, hit a three late in the last quarter. Well, Deja Kelly be playing a little more confidence after she finally hit her first field goal. She goes inside to Bailey, good idea. Bailey has been excellent today with her turnaround jumper. Copeland has been so physical. She's pushing her off the block. She's trying to push her as far away from the basket as possible. And Bailey has shown she can hit that little seven or eight footer. Bailey 14 points, one rebound away from a double-double, which would be a lot. Her 45th and her fourth straight double-double. She remembers. Double-double machine. She is, and she remembers that loss in 2019. Kelly, really the only one for North Carolina that does. Jalen Murray on the bench, the only other player who was in that game and on this team getting minutes at that time. Alexandra Zelaya in the game, number zero. Makes a cut toward the ball, spins. Abrams did a good job slowing her down, holding her up, and gets the rebound. And Jen, that's a know your personnel situation. Janelle Bailey passing the ball to a cutting Zelaya. Zelaya is not a player at this point in her career that can just put the ball on the deck and go finish in the middle of the defense. That pass would be better for a Deja Kelly or a Stephanie Watts cut into the basket. I know Bailey was looking for her open teammate, but that is not Zelaya's strength at this point. Shot clock getting low for Alabama. They go to Copeland. Bailey in a bad spot as she tried to draw the charge. No whistle was blown and then it was just try not to get stepped on. That's a nightmare situation. <laughs> you don't get the charge call and then you're just under all these shoes in the middle of the paint. Deja Kelly eventually was the one who got called for the foul and then nobody boxes out Walker but she can't finish. She's been a bit off, not her typical self. The All-SEC first team selection for the Tide this season. Bailey, turnaround doesn't go that time, but Zelaya, that's in her arsenal. Exactly right. That's what Zelaya is in there to do as a true freshman. Use her size, get some rebounds on the weak side when Janelle Bailey is doubled. And that's a big bucket for the freshman. Lewis taking some contact, sliding on the way in, makes it to get a chance to take another from the free throw line.
Mom is happy with that one from Jordan Lewis. It feels like every time North Carolina gets back in the game, Jordan Lewis goes to work and has an answer on the other end. That was a nasty crossed over. Look, looked right, used her eyes, looked right, went left, very quick, first step, and then a great finish with the left hand. Career high now for Jordan Lewis, 29 points, could make it 30 with the free throw. Mom may have been happy that she just got up with a bounce in her step after that foul. It was the third on Watts. 30 for Lewis to lead the way for Alabama. A casual 30 piece at noon on a Monday. No big deal for Jordan Lewis. Watts wanted it in the corner. That's why Stephanie Watts lighting it up, trying to keep the Tar Heels hopes alive. Her fifth three of the game, Stephanie Watts continues to find a way to keep North Carolina within striking distance. Lewis passes it off. Barber, she likes the three, but she'll take an open look at the rim. Barber with those three threes in the first half, scoreless in the second. But a big bucket, and then Steph Watts, someone guard her. Jen, you cannot leave Stephanie Watts, second all-time in career three-pointers at the University of North Carolina. You can't leave her that open. Six threes for the senior. 22 points for Watts. North Carolina within five. As you pointed out, every time it seems, North Carolina gets close. Alabama has an answer, but if Stephanie Watts keep doing this, Tar Heels are gonna be happy. Abrams is pointing, where's my defender? Where's my defender? Abrams, you gotta get out there on Stephanie Watts. You can't leave her open, getting lost in transition. Watts is gonna knock that down. Courtney Banghart said, I need my seniors to show up in the NCAA tournament, and they get it. They know the end is near. They want this season to continue and Stephanie Watts playing like it out there for North Carolina. It's so interesting, Jim. We talked about the depth for both of these teams and the balance. Both these teams are very balanced scoring wise. UNC with five and double figures, Bama with three. But today it's been all Jordan Lewis for Alabama and all Stephanie Watts for UNC. The little side of Janelle Bailey, I would say. <laughs> yes, Janelle Bailey, good point. Janelle Bailey has definitely been a good compliment to Stephanie Watts. Rebound away from a double-double. This is Ariel Young, her dad, C.Y. Young, an assistant coach of the Florida State men's team, play later on in the men's tournament. Bailey couldn't finish toward the end of the shot clock. Really good defense by Copeland, who has played for a while with those three fouls. Picked up her third early in the third quarter and has yet to commit a foul since. She wants it. Bailey playing some good defense, making it tough for Copeland inside. I feel like the ball has to be in Jordan Lewis's hands in these situations for Bama. Get her coming off a ball screen. The way she has played today has just been excellent. But instead, on that baseline out of bounds, they go right to Copeland, and Copeland says, count that. Give me those two in an and one. Copeland stared down Pedra Holashinska and said, no way, you're not stopping this. Holashinska, a little worse for the wear after that encounter. It's her third personal. Arden Copeland is no easy feat as Holashinska was trying to hold her own inside. A really good pass by Barber. Holashinska, hands straight up, took a little contact. I think that was just a basketball play, just some basketball contact in there. And Copeland says, count that basket. And Holly, what more can you tell us about Araya Copeland? Well, I think this the Alabama team is a completely different team with contact. her on the floor. She has 11 rebounds today. She gobbles up every rebound underneath the basket. And she had to be out for a significant portion of that third quarter with those three fouls. But she, when they're out there on the floor with her inside, Man, you just can't match up with her. It's really hard. Bailey's been trying. She's really been trying to push her off the block. 
But guys, she just is able to hold her own and take up so much real estate. I'm really impressed with her. When she's out on the court, they're a different Bama team. Well, Holly, they're right now taking a look at this play to see if there was any additional contact that might change the way that this play goes down. And they're going to watch that elbow, right, Kelly? I would think from Copeland, you heard my Forsberg. We've been granted access to here at the table what the referees are telling us. This is a what tough one at. because you obviously see the elbow. After and review, the ruling on the court stands. There's no unnecessary contact after the body foul by blue number two. Uh, we're going to have two free throws to resume play. And that's exactly what I was about to say. So the officials came in Correction. there. I'm so glad we One have access. Throw. Basketball is good. <laughs> so glad we have access to the officials. And that's exactly what I would have said. I think, yes, there was an elbow to the face contact, but that was a complete basketball play. There was nothing intentional about what Copeland did. Tune in Friday when the Men's Ice Hockey Championship gets underway in Bridgeport at 1 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app when Wisconsin takes on Bemidji State in the regional semis and visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. We do appreciate, by the way, that access and we appreciate all the work that went into it because typically we would have the referees come over and tell us at the table when there was any sort of a play like that. So we appreciate everybody's cooperation in getting us and getting you that information. Copeland, unfazed. And Alabama up eight. Not a lot of movement other than one or two players for North Carolina. Bailey trying to set a screen. Foul called. And I'll stay with North Carolina. And give a lot of credit to Alabama. Defensively, they have brought it. They are all over these UNC wings as they're trying to pass the ball around the floor. And actually, Bama, they're playing. They're still in their 2-3 zone principles-wise. But to me, it looks like, yeah, this possession, they're playing a lot more man. Watts got a little loose on the handle, had it poked away. No need to rush here if you're Alabama. Take your time, get a good shot. And get it inside to Copeland, who if she doesn't make it the first time, she'll give herself another chance or maybe give Barber a chance to light it up. Hannah Barber continues to light it up from three. The best time to shoot a three is off an offensive rebound. Copeland made that play possible. Got her offensive rebound, found Hannah Barber, who stepped right into that three ball. Deja Kelly back at the site of her high school state championship where she was MVP last year for Duncanville High School. Olashinska to Bailey. Oh, she got some friendly help from the back of the rim. I like this defensive switch, though, by Alabama. They're playing man. This, is, this team has been pretty much a strictly 2-3 zone team as Jasmine Walker. She is getting going, Jen, for Alabama. That was a huge shot for the Tide. But you'll see they're playing man-to-man -man mainly because they don't want to let Steph Watts get going. Abrams has practically been face guarding Steph Watts and has not let her get the ball. And they're saying, let anyone else beat us. Just don't let Steph Watts get an open look from three. Bailey may have forced the issue a little and Alabama now tied for its largest lead of the game. Walker got herself a great look and finishes it off. The lead getting better for the Crimson Tide. Jasmine Walker had a little bit of a slow start, but she has come alive in this fourth quarter. The senior first team all SEC performer knocks down a three. She doesn't want to go home. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet?
Got teams getting ready to go. Virginia Tech getting a little practice in along with the Michigan Wolverines. Both of those teams booked their ticket into the second round. Alabama, North Carolina trying to do the same. Watts curls around everybody. Stephanie Watts continues to pour it in. 24 points for Watts. Hard to believe it's not the best offensive performance of the day as Jordan Lewis, who has the ball right now for the Crimson Tide, has 30 points, 10 rebounds, eight assists. We are nearing, we are in, we are officially in, Jen, triple-double watch for Jordan Lewis. Indeed we are, and those 30 points, not only the most of the day, it's early, that's the most of this tournament so far for any team, but Copeland, she was quiet early. She had some foul trouble, just two points in the first half. She has been a huge presence in every way for the Crimson Tide this second half. Must be big bucket for North Carolina, though. North Carolina applying some pressure. It's desperation time now, down 12 with about two minutes to go. You've got to find a way to force some turnovers because right now, Bama and North Carolina are just trading baskets. North Carolina still a ways to go. Alabama up 12, trying to get to round two. Coming up next over on ESPN2, the NCAA Women's Championship first round continues with these matchups from the Mercado region. Stony Brook, Arizona, followed by Belmont, Gonzaga, then Troy takes on Texas A&M. And at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, here in the Hemisphere region, Bradley, Texas. All games also available on the ESPN app. All regions in the NCAA Women's Tournament in action today, except for Riverwalk. Got all of their games in on day one. Speaking of getting it in, no easy feat for Alabama. Watts batted it out of bounds. The Tide will have to try again. North Carolina applying pressure. They're going to trap this inbounds pass. They're going to do whatever they can, at least they did on the previous possession, but do whatever they can to try to force some turnovers. You're down 12. You've got to find a way to get stops and go the other way and possibly get some threes at this point, Jen. I think Steph Watts is where you have to hone in on. Well, North Carolina has made seven of their last nine, Kelly, but to your point, is it enough? I mean, you think the three ball might have to start playing a factor and they're trading buckets to a certain extent as I mentioned before we went to break because they can't get stops on the other end now Watts is playing with four fouls for North Carolina but we're going to take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance guess who how about the player with the most points in this tournament so far and look, we're still on triple-double watch, okay? There's still some time left in this game. 30 piece for Jordan Lewis. She has knocked down the three ball today. She has been tenacious on the glass. 10 rebounds, attacking the basket. Tough finishes. And mom and dad are very proud in the stands. Well, they should be. Jordan Lewis, a redshirt senior, such a veteran team for Alabama. A group that does not want to go home. And Derek and Shireen, happy to be there and take this one in. As you well know, parents have not had a lot of opportunities. Tickets were limited to get to come watch this game. But it's been a special performance so far by Jordan Lewis. Kelly, she started every game that she's been available in her career for Alabama. And she wants to make sure there's going to be at least one more of those this season. She's done so much at Alabama, a big part of this turnaround, a big part of why Alabama has made their first NCAA tournament since 1999. And Coach Curry was telling us just how much Jordan Lewis has meant to this program, what a great leader she is, and how proud Coach Curry is to be her coach. You can see plenty of timeouts left for each team, three apiece for both North Carolina and Alabama. And Jordan Lewis putting on an absolute show today for the Crimson Tide. North Carolina not fouling yet, just trying to see if they can take it away. No time going off the clock, though. They're going to try to play it out, it looks like. 
Jump ball, is it? That is the call by Mai Forsberg. She's the closest official. Was Christy Curry calling a timeout? That's what everyone is wondering, was the timeout. That's what officially looks like that the timeout was given to Christy Curry, perhaps before the jump ball was called. The official was pointing right at Christy Curry, saying she got the timeout call in quick enough. I know North Carolina thought they had a jump ball. And to me, Jen, why UNC is not fouling yet is because they can hit threes in bunches. So they know if they get a steal, they get a turnover, go down, hit a three, maybe one more steal, hit another three, you're right back in it. But I think you're getting to a point now where you have to consider fouling if you're North Carolina. You try to get a steal off of this inbound, and then you most likely have to foul. Because both of these teams want to make sure those dates are on their calendar as the NCAA Women's Championship continues on ESPN and our family of networks. The Sweet 16 not too far away. Elite 8 coming up right at the end of the month. And then the Final Four, Friday, April 2nd, 6 and 9.30 on ESPN. April 4th, the championship game coming your way. And North Carolina has done a great job defending these inbounds from the sideline for Alabama. They take this one away. And they did get their steal. That's why Coach Banghart did not want to foul yet. She thought she could get a steal on that possession. As you've mentioned, Jen UNC has been great denying All the inbounds pass. Carolinas, out of bounds, the play is on a review. So they're just going to see to make sure who this went off of. Our pal, Mai Forsberg, jumping in there to <laughs> let us know what's going on. The final two minutes, you are allowed to look at this and review who the ball last went out of bounds on. It was ruled North Carolina ball initially. That was the original call on the floor. Don't see any reason that, to change that, do you? Yes, from that angle, it certainly looks like it went off Jasmine Walker. This angle is tougher to tell, but that angle we just saw, I do not believe Holoshinska touched it after right there when Jasmine Ruling Walker. Ruling on the court is confirmed. Blue ball. There you go. So it will stay with North Carolina. 120 to play. 10 point game. North Carolina. Got the defensive job done. Now can they find the offense they need? Whether it's a two or a three, you have to score quick. Stephanie Watts will do it! How does Watts get that wide open? Excellent offense by North Carolina, but you have to know the one person, the one person that can't get an open three is Steph Watts. It was a great screen by Janelle Bailey. Abrams got a little lost as they ran Watts through a double screen coming up to the three-point line. And you know, with the way Stephanie Watts is feeling right now, Jen, if she gets an open look, that ball's going in. There's no doubt about it. It's kind of how Jordan Lewis, Jordan Lewis is feeling on the other side for Alabama. But now the defensive stop has to be the most important thing for North Carolina as you look at the numbers for both of these seniors. Watson Lewis putting on a show. UNC has found a way to hit big threes, but they have to get a stop on this possession. And if you don't get an early steal, you have to at least consider fouling. But the way North Carolina's defended, I would defend for at least an early portion of this possession. Oh, Deja Kelly nearly takes it away, but some great pressure being applied by North Carolina. Is Alabama going to get it over in time? There's a whistle. Wow. Maybe another timeout. Or did the defense do it? I thought they called it a second violation. I think that Coach is Bang the Hart call and every on the floor. other UNC coach was holding up 10 seconds. It felt like a quick 10 seconds to me, but that is a turnover. It was right on. I was watching the shot clock. It was right on. What? A little short on that one. Now what does North Carolina do? Now you have to foul, I think. So far, they were resistant to do so, but now eventually the Tar Heels do foul, and they'll put Lewis 
keep the ball in her hands. If you're Alabama, neither team has very many team fouls. But that one does put Alabama in the bonus. That was the fifth for North Carolina. Just one in this quarter for Alabama. And the parents, let me tell you, they feel the stress too. I don't know why mom is stressed. Jordan Lewis is an excellent free throw shooter. That's who Alabama wants on the free throw line right now as she continues to add to her career high. No she made 118 worries. Tell mom. free throws. No worries season. at all. <laughs> See, look, dad's not worried. Mom was worried. Dad, no. <laughs> oh, that is such a sigh of relief right there. I feel you, Shireen. I know. She just wants to see her daughter lead this team into the next round. Keep playing another day. Find another houndstooth accessory for round Can two. Can we get just a small cam on Shireen? Because her emotions <laughs> throughout this game have been excellent. I need her in my top right corner. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you can just tell, and you've said this before, Kelly, what it means to have your parents there, to have that presence, to help lift you up for this Alabama team that has not been in the NCAA tournament since 1999. This group trying to make a difference. And I'm so glad the NCAA allowed some fans to be there and specifically family of these players. It's absolutely an incredible moment for the Lewis family to have Jordan Lewis go for her career high 32 and the fact that both of her parents were able to be in the stands for that game. Kelly gets the rebound, but now that rebound from who else? Lewis, and now North Carolina is just gonna have to chase her. Time running out on the Tar Heels. But maybe waving the white flag. The Alabama Crimson Tide, a team full of veterans, no NCAA experience, but plenty of other experience. They came battle tested through the SEC this season. They came in here hungry, and they look like they are going to be moving on to round two. And even though Barber turned the ball over there, I feel like Alabama's done a very good job of handling UNC's pressure. UNC has been pressuring them for the last couple of minutes, trying to get back in the game. Alabama showed a lot of poise. Roll, tie, roll. The Alabama Crimson Tide on their way to the second round. As you say, Jen, party like it's 1999 and Jordan Lewis, 32 points, 11 rebounds, 8 rebounds. That'll get you a hug from your head coach.